We're going to dive right into it today, guys. We're going to talk about the Vanos 4.4 V8 E39 and the intake manifold upgrade and all the controversy that I think is behind it and why some people think that they don't notice gains when they do this, etc. So I'll start off by saying and showing you the differences. Um, this is the intake manifold off the older 4 liter V8. It's also used on the 4.6 V8 and the X5. Supposedly the best flowing intake BMW makes. Um, I've already got it installed obviously so when it's off it's noticeably bigger but how you can easily tell whether or not you've got the good one or not which if you're a Van Oaks engine you don't have the good one you see how there's actually cracks in between every runner port and on this one it's all just kind of blended together so I'm not sure if you can get a part number there I will post it in the comments after after I'm done but you want the intake manifold off the 4.4 liter or the 4 liter early V8 <clears throat> or a non Vanos 4.4 should have this manifold as well so the first reason if you install this and you don't think you notice a gain and you're running a stock airbox etc you've got major restriction right here in this elbow that is not designed to flow whatsoever it's junk the second thing when you take the top off your air box there's this little slip sleeve that goes in there that's also major restriction so if you make everything bigger behind it but it can't flow in front of it you're not going to get any more air going through so I've upgraded all that all you guys that don't like this filter the hot air intake and you lose 50 horsepower pipe it down through underneath it's fine like this for me um, this car doesn't idle that much I drive usually 70 80 miles an hour so it's got the upgraded throttle body from Turner Motorsports um, I've only driven the car 40 50 kilometers so far and seems to work way better on the top end <clears throat> for the install it was pretty involved getting this wire harness out of the way uh, the clips inside on the fuel injector clips is rather annoying to get them off um, I actually just that was probably the worst procedure of the whole thing other than that it was just um, you know these few vacuum lines pull the thing out complete strip the back off dress your new one up or rather take the new parts from the newer style manifold put them on the old manifold uh, your spacer plate in the front fuel rail works and fits perfectly there's no issues there so it's a pretty straightforward swap um, that being said we'll uh, fire it up show you what it sounds like I notice it seems like it's quite a bit louder especially like in the mid-range so
Depot lights still holding up great. So <clears throat> I am going to put this on the dyno just for complete verification. Uh, may seem like a joke. But I don't believe in a lot of these stupid apps and tablets and stuff. But I will say I dynoed this car. I drove this car a lot with this app on. And here under horsepower, I have never, ever, ever exceeded 262 horsepower. Um, today on the first drive, I did a pull about 30 kilometers in, and we had a reading of 289 horsepower. So, I mean, I'm not going to rely on this, but if this car dynos and lays down what this says, uh, I'm going to be pretty happy with this. Uh, this whole intake swap and I will say that the car drives better pulls harder feels better um, especially like everyone comments when you uh, you know once you get 5,000 and beyond this range here is much much better so try to ignore this it's on the way it just up and failed it's a mess but um, yeah this little torque app on this particular car seems to be quite quite accurate as much as I uh, don't like the green with this stuff so uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video another great product is these sprint boosters to hook to your gas pedal liven up the sensitivity a little bit for you this car has got 225,000 on it now. I'm going to change the oil tomorrow morning. And that's the other thing. If this is reading the right horsepower, this needs an oil change right now. So technically it should be a little bit better with a fresh oil change. So that's the video. doesn't drag itself back as much when you let off and coast either like it seemed like it slowed down more 